We made it, fam. We survived the two weeks of back-to-back, wall-to-wall free media coverage that is the 2016 Republican and Democrat National Conventions. The thing to know about conventions, parades, or any large event is that you're around people who are united for at least one overarching reason. But you then realize that you're actually surrounded by people who are strange and you actually wouldn't want to spend time with them. It's like going to see a band you like perform live, only to realize that you hate their fans, who all turn out to be sweaty, drugged up 15 year olds who only know the band's two most popular songs. They say you can judge a person by the company they keep. By extension, you should be able to judge a potential president by the company they keep. My son's life was stolen at the hands of an illegal alien. Hillary Clinton, or as we know her, Crooked Hillary, always talks about what she will do for illegal aliens and refugees. Well, Donald Trump talks about what he will do for America. Donald Trump will have your back. Well, we have a lot to go off of. During RNC week, we saw Trump wanting North Dakota oil tycoon Harold Hamm to be his energy advisor in his administration. Deciding to fight global warming with someone who profits off of gas is like hiring Milo Yiannopoulos to host sensitivity trainings. New Hampshire State Representative Al Baldazio said that Hillary Clinton should be put on the firing line, and Michael Folk from West Virginia said that she should be hung on the mall in Washington, D.C. Which is a lot to say about a person. I mean, the death penalty should only be reserved for murderers or human traffickers or assholes who take up the last two parking spaces in parking lots. The highlight of it all for me, when Donald Trump got on stage and said to America, I will work hard and never let you down. If he's trying to get the woman vote, he probably doesn't want to start with the number one lie men tell women everywhere and one he told to his previous two wives. I expected a little more rhetorical creativity out of Donald Trump. What a mess. Sad. Does not make good deals. Meanwhile, at the DNC, we opened up the week with a bevy of emails showing clear bias for Hillary against Bernie on the part of the Democratic National Committee, from collusion with media influencers to the suggestion of smear tactics to bring Sanders down, which Chairwoman Debbie Wasserman Schultz was completely fine with. Then she was caught. Then she felt bad and resigned. Pundits, politicos, and even DNC guest speakers have belittled those who haven't thrown their support for Hillary, i.e. the Bernie or Bus crowd, as childish, misguided, or privileged. Yes, because the best thing to do to a vocal crowd of people who react poorly to being dismissed and patronized is to dismiss and patronize them. With friends like these, who needs democracies? If you're someone who doesn't like bigotry or corruption, you're stuck, because both are represented in our presidential race. There have been calls on both sides lately about conscience voting where most political parties want you to vote within the party, this year's dissenters want you to vote your conscience. If you're having trouble doing that, consider this. We've probably lost control of the executive branch, so let's fight to get the best outcome for the other two. He or she who wins the presidency will get to appoint one, two, maybe more Supreme Court justices. Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg, the notorious RBG, was put on the court by President Carter. He was sworn in almost 40 years ago. Donald Trump will leave office after four at most eight years if there's a country left by then. However, the ramifications of Trump's SCOTUS picks could cement his ideology in the country for generations. There are 535 members of Congress. About 470 of them are up to re-election. That's 88%. Members of Congress and their staff draft the intricate details of the legislation that is actually impactful. And unlike presidents and Supreme Court justices, members of the Senate and the House have offices that are in your state. Members of the House might be a quick drive or a train ride away from you. You can call them, write to them, pressure them about issues you care about, and hold them accountable to campaign promises. And they directly create legislation. All a president does is sign it. And if they go against the will of the public, they're in trouble. Lasting change won't come in the form of a president. It'll come from the Supreme Court. It'll come from picking the most honest, progressive Congress people possible. It'll come from your conscientious vote being an investment and not a knee-jerk reaction. Let's just... Let's just not fuck this up, okay, America? We don't want Donald Trump to win, right? Right?